<laughs> the, the room is in its new stages. They, they've got a beautiful curtain, and from where I'm standing, it looks like the world's biggest bridesmaid is about to sit on my face. Because, <laughs> you know, women love to dress their overweight friends in red velvet on their special days. <laughs> Look, you know, you fuckers are really tight ass, you know that. <laughs> but you must even look at each other going, fuck, it must be us. It must be. Clearly it's us. You, look, you, you're not even comedy fans. You're all, you're all reluctant friends of Steve and Dave, aren't you? They dragged me out here. Hey, look, we've invested a lot of money. We got the spray paint guy came in and did all the faces. <laughs> People you'll never see here other than the, the paintings, uh, some of them because they're too famous, and many of them because they're dead. <laughs> we won't see Wayne or Schuster here, ever. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those nights, I just, you got your foot on the fucking stage, my friend, that's how casual Richmond Hill is. <laughs> Fuck Richmond Hill, it's not even a hill, like, where's the hill? <laughs> it's not even a mound, what kind of lying piece of shit more of a Richmond ditch. <laughs> Anywho, doesn't matter. Uh, believe it or not, I, I missed this. This kind of shit with the COVID. Three years of not being able to perform in front of people, it fucking hurt. And, I, and it, it made you feel shitty too, because I, after about, when we got uh, near uh, year three, I was, I was, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I sort of missed uh, terrorism. <laughs> remember last, remember a big old terrorist attack? Fuck, that was exciting. Hey, some, and not just piddly shit either, something big. It'd blow up a fucking building. Holy Christ, you're terrorizing. A whole year goes by, fuck, you're scared, and it's exciting. But pandemic, fuck, I'm, I've been bored to death. Just, you know, just fuck, wait for someone to, well, remember the, uh, 10 years ago, uh, they, they busted some kids in Toronto that uh, wanted to uh, blow up a subway station. And they were terrorists. And I, God forbid they ever blow up a subway station in Toronto, but if they do, uh, let's hope it's Chester. <laughs> who the fuck ever gets on or off at Chester? Nobody, that's the point of the joke. See, that's why I knew you guys weren't a comedy crowd. <laughs> when someone repeats something in the audience where the, it was the punchline, and then follows it with a... See, that's not a comedy club reaction. When you hear something, you go, that's it. Okay. I don't even know why they're calling it jokers. It should be, you know, something maybe lighter. Now, you probably feel the pressure of it being called jokers. Let's relax. Plus, you've got a little army of little people making uh, dinner or whatever the fuck's going on in that weird room. <laughs> That's fucking freak. There's a whole bunch of people just staring at something I can't see from an angle. And, and I fuck, I don't believe any of this bullshit. There's no fucking holograms in there. Dave and Steve have slaves, and they're very little. There's about a thousand of them in that fucking room. And if that, that's why they have to have the hermetically sealed door. If you open that door for a minute, ah, a million of these little fuckers, they'll climb right in your, uh, in your urinary tract and attack your lungs. Okay, I'm not a doctor. I am fucking working far too much for the reaction I'm getting from you fucking stunned fuck. I don't care about you. I don't give a fuck. You don't have to like this shit. I don't care. I've got my drink. It better be on the fucking house. I've got my drink. <laughs> i got two chairs. This fat ass Glenn can't move his fucking anyway. <laughs> and you blew the fucking story, you cucks. I, I did 40. You did maybe 20. <laughs> and then, and then this is the whole fucking point. He he made so much more money than me. And it was when he went, well, okay, just the way he looked at me like sucker. <laughs> Who knew that years later we'd be back in the prime of showbiz here in Richmond Ditch <laughs> with the midget people that are fucking, they're, they're even smaller than midgets. I don't like this, but they're fucking coming. And now the, the room is filling full of them and they've eaten all the Asians in there. <laughs> don't, it's like piranha. 
It's bucket boot. <laughs> it's a tank full of Asian piranhas. I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> but you can see the way I do my fucking smile a bit better. Take your fucking hands off your face. <laughs> you don't go to a comedy guild and have your fucking hand in your face all night and watch it from the back. <laughs> Who goes to a comedy club? <laughs> Let it out, lady. Still nice to be here. <laughs> it's an act, by the way. Many of you are frightened. Oh, crazy you lunatic. No, I'm a skilled professor. <laughs> <laughs> fucking right hand. I'm high as a kite because it's legal in the country. <laughs> I was in England. I work in London, England most of the time. Well, I did prior to COVID. And uh, I love, I don't, there's no, you can't get weed in England. I was in London when they legalized weed in Canada. I was so, so excited to go home. Yeah. Oh, Christ, legal weed. Then I started to panic, because it's government weed, and all they're going to fuck this up. Because that's what the government does. It takes anybody's government, not just the Canadian government. Would, it, they take something that's fun, and then they suck all the fucking fun out of it. And then they charge you twice as much. It doesn't matter what it is. I, I flew from London, England to Calgary. There's a cultural jump you don't want to live with. I got to Calgary, I bought my first little canister of legal weed. I was excited but nervous. And it, what made me really giggle, it was like, it said like the cannabis on one side and then cannabis in French on the other. I thought, oh fuck, I'm gonna get high cannabis style. But I didn't really. And I rolled a joint, I smoked it, I was so fucking happy because I, I was so stoned legally. <laughs> it, it, it got rid of the guilt of being high. So I don't know if it's really good weed or you're just less guilty. <laughs> but holy fuck, my pot hit, I flew! And I, I, I'll tell you how high I got. At one point, I forgot what my wrists were called. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I referred to my wrists as hand ankles. <laughs> and I was with like eight people that none of them blinked. None of them, oh yeah, hand ankles. Like, like it was a normal thing to say. That was a wonderful story, and you almost enjoyed it. <laughs> Where the fuck are you off to after this? Hey, I hope, I hope not a fundraiser. I hope that nothing where you need love. <laughs> I'm new with the beard, so I'm spitting all over the fucking way. Because it's a COVID beard, because I didn't even, it's not even a beard, a beard is something you sculpt. This is clearly just not shaped. It's a difference. This is where I don't give a fuck what I look like anymore. And I missed the mask, because I was telling everyone to fuck off. It was fantastic. But I, the only time you'll ever see me in a mask is not because I care about you. It's because I'm calling you a goof or something like, you fucking cocksucker, look at you. You fat fucking bitch. Or whatever it is. <laughs> My point is, you've got to imagine for a moment, kids, please, imagine if you can being me right now. Only seven years ago, Seven. I, I I was I was at the Sydney Opera House. I was performing at the Sydney fucking Opera House. I remember at the end of the show, two gentlemen approached me. I said that was a wonderful show. That we really enjoyed it. Would you like to play Jokers in Richmond? <laughs> <laughs> and I jumped at the chance. Is that a hundred grand? A hundred grand or something? <laughs> it, it, it won't be a good job. You're not going to get not for a hundred G's. I'll be all over your fucking knob with my beard. I just fucking grinding my, my whiskers into your cock hole. <laughs> oh, so that is that. <laughs> it's still not the toughest fucking room, not of, of, of late. <laughs> Several months ago, I was in Ottawa during the uh, Freedom uh, Rally. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> I want you to leave here tonight and, and not worried about all in Christ, such fucking mouth breathing motherfucker. I, they, were, they were incredibly thick. Well, as you, you'd know. 
right? Bring up, you know, that, you know fuck. Where were they? They were, they were, they were, they were Nazi flags. Not a lot of them, but you shouldn't need a lot. <laughs> like, okay, I can understand upset, overweight white people pissed off with some bullshit. They want to get together and go to a rally. They've never been to a protest before. I'm going to try this. The Black Lives Matter, I saw that on the TV. I'm going to go up there, I'm going to protest. And then he shows up at a protest, and then he looks over and there's a Nazi flag. Now shouldn't you, as a human, when you see a Nazi flag, immediately go, holy fuck, I have made a huge mistake. <laughs> I have made, I, I have to go home. I'm gonna recalibrate. Holy fuck! There's Nazis here! I'm with Nazis! <laughs> no, not these motherfuckers. No, I, no, they're like, oh, 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 they just told them not to wave them. Go ahead. But, and here's the bullshit of, of the Freedom Rally. It was organized. How, how free are you? If you need someone to organize your freedom. <laughs> but, but someone to say, okay, now next Wednesday, we're going to be free. <laughs> Wednesday at 7, not 7.30, at 7. <laughs> Everyone got their free shirts. Everyone got their freedom shirts and flags. Okay, let's be free right now. Oh, right. And remember, uh, what I said last night, if you have a Nazi flag, don't leave it. You know, just keep it in your in your bunk, in your trailer, okay? Just under your bed until you until you trust someone. Because <laughs> in my day, when you, when you were a Nazi, you, you held on to your flag. You didn't wave it. You were hoping to meet someone else, sort of like a date. You know, you go out with someone that had short hair and looked angry. I said, oh, you just got that. See you. I just heard that out loud. I heard someone in the brand new comedy club get a joke. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is incredible. Look, we all, all night we've been waiting for that. And then tonight, that was it. Tonight, we heard it. around this much in my fucking life. <laughs> Both my feet left the floor, you saw it. I'm just, I run 5K a day. You know what the hardest part of running 5K a day is? Keeping it to your fucking self. That's the hardest part. <laughs> I bring it up every two moments. I just did. I'm doing it again. <laughs> no, you, when I was a kid, you were, what? I'm guessing you were a Nazi. Wait. Go up a few times, have a few chats with them, you know, hint towards hoping that maybe they might say, well, the Jews do uh, own a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be a Nazi. This might be working. So bring them back to your mother's basement where you live. Put a tin foil on the windows there in the bottom drawer, you pull out that bottom drawer, and there's your hidden Nazi flag, and you bring it out to the way back. And he looks at you, and he points to a tattoo hidden by a turtleneck on his neck, a little SS tattoo. Oh, you're a Nazi. My point on that one is, uh, people with turtlenecks, Nazis. My point on that one. <laughs> but, and then these two Nazis finally meet. And then uh, they fuck. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no punchline for this, but that must be the perk of being a Nazi, is a good, good come with another Nazi. It can't just be hate. It can't, that can't be enough. Now, many of my jokes don't end with a funny thing. And it doesn't matter here. I can't tell if it went over or, you know, someone didn't get it or a ringleader didn't get it. <laughs> Did she get it? Because she's a girl. <laughs> Can I have a shot at Jack Daniels before my wife shows up? <laughs> <laughs> Holy Christ Almighty. I missed I, I moved to Ajax. 
which is like Richmond Hill, but yeah, the other way. It's just full of a bunch of fucking white people that are afraid of Toronto. <laughs> GTA. That means nothing's here. That's what GTA means. Well, it doesn't stand for that, but GTA means, ah, uh, we're fucked. There's going to be a lot of A&Ws and nothing to see. So, again, I have no idea where I'm rambling, but it's my point. Uh, I have no point. That's my point on that. I, uh, I run Toronto. Holy Jesus! Uh, okay, all right. Now, no, I'm not kidding. My old lady's coming. And so you can't leave the fucking bottle any. And no one tell her! I'm not, but you, Steve. Holy fuck, she's a brute. I don't think we've been together 35 years because she scares the living fuck out of me, and that gives me a hard on. <laughs> we had a trailer. This is I bought one of those wind up pumpkins. You can see us in parks. All over Ontario winding up our fucking houses. And you can almost hear the music as we do it. I'm sort of a da 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 The wife and I are losers. It opens up, there's a shitter in it. We've never used it because it's next to the stove. Now, I'm not an architect, but. Shouldn't there be something between those two things? This, my point being, now are you, you're still not even a gay lady, not even a uh, What kind of comedy do you like? Do you like tripping people? What kind of comedy? Nothing? Okay, why you put her up front? Is this like a trick? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I threw it. Is that a little kid's voice? Okay. I'm hearing a little kid come out of the little midget brought me dinner. I <laughs> Mommy, take me back to that restaurant with the little slaves bring me a pork chop. <laughs> oompa, loompa, loompa, What were the union of things in my point being? I'm born and bred Torontonian, and there's nothing sadder. Torontonians are the most insecure people on the planet. We like to think we're New York, but we're so fucking fine. This would be long, I know. But we like to think we're from New York, but we're so fucking good. We're so insecure. Give me an idea about Toronto. Uh, last, two, two or three years ago, a guy got arrested. He owned a, uh, an Asian market. And he got arrested for selling ground arctic seal penis as an aphrodisiac. But he didn't, this is the Toronto part, he didn't get busted for selling ground arctic seal penis. He got busted for selling counterfeit ground arctic seal penis. <laughs> I don't know why that reeks of Toronto. But it turns out it, it, it was dog penis. Aww. Uh, where the, where the fuck were you with the seal? <laughs> you didn't even blink an eye when it was seal caught, but they had it come. <laughs> how, you gonna, how horrible is that? <laughs> I'm not saying, look, it's cruel, it's unnecessary, it's ridiculous. My only point is dog penis should be a significantly cheaper. Because, <laughs> you know, Arctic seal cock, but it's, 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 first you have to go to the Arctic. <laughs> and, and that's not cheap. And then you gotta find the seals. They're not waiting for you at the airport with their dicks out. <laughs> I mean, dog cock, uh, how easy is dog, I have, I have two dogs. We've got their nuts on, they didn't seem to mind that that much. Dog cock, what happens tonight after a few drinks, we could leave here with a, with a pair of scissors and fill it. Fill a pillowcase full of dog cock? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it should be cheap. That's all I'm saying. That and someone in Toronto could tell the difference. Someone in my hometown could tell the difference between dog cock and seal. Now he, he bought some Arctic seal. This is what really had, had to. He went out and bought ground arctic seal, so I can't get a hard on it. 
So rather than go to Susie Atlas or, or any of the proven remedies, Viagra, no, fuck that. I'm getting the ground records here because I found what looked like a trustworthy person in the market. <laughs> and you buy a little bag of ground arctic seal cock. Now, I, I don't know how you would do it as a drug. Ground arctic seal cock, I, it's powder, so I like to think it's coke, because I like doing coke, and it's sexy when you do it right. <laughs> so, it brings, pardon? Yes! Okay. <laughs> Not really a heck of more, but we'll just push you along with this. Uh, looks like Mr. Science is in the room now. There's why. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying you bring a, you know, here's the guy buys some ground arctic steel penis. Uh, or what he thinks is. Thank you. And uh, uh, if there, that fuck, if, hol if holograms of little fuckers are getting a better round of applause than me. What the fuck has happened to this world? Are you fucking kidding me? I've never in my life wanted to be a small fucking animated thing more than now. Me and all my little brothers just fucking planning a takeover of the fucking grown-ups. We'll take you down, you motherfuck my point again.
I, I hope they're enjoying the show in the back. Did you hear someone just go, oh my God. <laughs> this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I didn't even want to come in. We, we were trying to get into that Greek place around the corner. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> she got a breast reduction a few years back. I was against that. I, I, I like her tits were like people to me. <laughs> After 35 years with them, they were, they were like humans. And, you know, I, I remember the three of us used to get together. <laughs> and whisper secrets behind her back. <laughs> that's, that's how big her kids were. <laughs> and what I missed the most is I had a sound in my head for the size of her. Like the original ones, were, I, every time I squeezed one, I heard in my head. <laughs> that's, that's the fucked up thing about men. Every video has an, has an oil. A corresponding sound. Your tits are pop, pop, pop. That's a tip. <laughs> your ass. That's your ass. <laughs> uh, uh, pussy. <laughs> we have an oasis for everything. I don't think women are like. I don't think women. I don't think there's a woman in here ever had a cock in her mouth with a noise in her head other than regret. <laughs> Just sitting there blowing a guy in a dumpster. What the fuck has happened to my life? You know what? That kind of thing. <laughs> She's very kind to me, the wife. Uh, she knows, uh, like most women that are stuck with a guy, and I mean that, stuck with a guy, that he's always behind you, waiting to grow you. <laughs> That's our job, as men, we just hover behind you, waiting for you to put an arm up. And we can see a little side boob and get fucking hold of it. And in our heads, we're making that we're making that noise. And she knows it's coming. She goes, oh, fuck me. And she lets me do it. And she lets me giggle and just run off into the darkness. Because you can do that with, 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 with breasts. You can do that with boobs. You, you can't do that with vaginas. You can't, you can't just wiggle one for fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't sneak up on her in the shower. And just give her a little hum 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 and run. Because <laughs> she'll chase you down and she'll murder you. <laughs> she, she, hey, do you ever want to, you want your woman to sound like a man, wiggle her vagina and try to leave. <laughs> and immediately, where, hey, where the fuck? <laughs> Get back here! You just tickled the dragon! <laughs> You went to the vagina, put, put down your suitcase, my friend, you, you're there for a bit. <laughs> She's a tall woman for this job. That's like a nine foot woman I'm fingering. You don't even get a decent woman. Oh, no, he's not with a nine footer. One more of them. It's all. So, I'm glad you came out, but don't don't come back. <laughs> you know, but you, you did as best as you could, but it's just not enough on a Saturday night when you couldn't compete with the little cartoon people. Uh, I, I'm glad. You know, here's here's what I think. You guys are more like a Thursday crowd. So why don't you go back to Thursdays where you belong? Where you'll have a moderately good time and leave early because you want to go home and fold things. So, again, you're taking it personally, you fucking it. Anyway, clearly, Steve, the sign's not big enough. Thank you all very much.